Thank you everyone for uh, sticking around. I know this was a very long day and that this is a very long week. Uh, so I, I, I do appreciate the time. Um, so although I introduced many of the people that talked uh, here today, I get to introduce myself. I have been a part of FreeMind for about six years now. I have a science background, a master's in uh, cellular biology and uh, started as a part of the professional department. I wrote many of these grants and I now give a lot of the talks about uh, how to write these grants. I have been a part of the, the BD team for about four years now. So today we're going to talk about the congressionally directed medical research programs, a part of the, the Department of Defense, the DOD. And although we definitely submit many types of grants in FreeMind, uh, the, definitely across the board, um, I can tell you that uh, many of them are within the DOD. And within the DOD, you have the CDMRP uh, program. Um, we love working with them. We love submitting uh, CDMRP grants. And um, you know, when we look at the basically the, the amounts that are given or the stages of development that are supported through uh, these agency, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, that's a, a short list of those. We see that the CDMRP is uh, definitely available for all stages of development. So they'll help you fund your very, very early stage work. They'll help you fund uh, the breach uh, period of the, the research before you can really take VC meetings. And they'll also fa uh, fund your phase ones and phase twos. Um, so for our clients, they are in a way in a, an ideal partner because their spectrum is, is so broad and um, th their scope is very wide as well. We um, see the, the, these programs um, as, in, in a way, a mechanism for Congress to to allocate funds based on specific indications. Um, and we see that the programs themselves are, in a way, a part of, um, of you know, a, a list of indications that they support. Um, we do know that they change their focus area every year. And we also like working with them because they have an expedited review process, which gives our clients a lot of wiggle room in terms of submitting it because bandwidth is, bandwidth is always an issue when we're talking about early stage companies and of course with uh, more advanced uh, companies as well. So that's always nice. Um, another interesting element is that with all the CDMRP programs, non-US entities can submit. I know we talked a lot about the SBAR program here today, uh, which again, we love as well, but uh, they are somewhat limited. Um, and with the CDMRPs, we actually don't see that limitation. Wondering why it's not moving. Okay, this should be better. So um, when we think about, yeah, sorry? I have a question for you about the non-US entity. Sure. Um, does that also include the outsourcing of, say, uh, product manufacturing, uh, or is it just the company so the question is, can uh, these programs fund non-U.S. entities and non-U.S. Uh, partners, collaborators? Yeah, so absolutely. You can do the work outside the U.S. even if you're a U.S. Uh, company, uh, as opposed to, for example, the SPR program where you're definitely bound to do everything within the U.S. Um, and the, the CDMRP mission is to eradicate diseases and support the warfighter. And when you think DOD, you think about combat-related indications for obvious reasons, but the truth is that their scope is very wide because they also take care of veterans and their family members. So um, I, I love this, this photo that they, uh, they uh, issued uh, a few years ago in 2015 because it just encapsulates the exact mission of the CDMRP. You'll see, and, and we'll talk about all kinds of programs within their scope. Some of them have nothing to do with warfare, um, but they do include, in a way, a military relevance, which is sometimes helping someone that is a part of the DOD's family, in a way. 
And um, so when we think about the DOD, we have to remember that their review process is a little different compared to the NIH's one. And I just wanted to, to take a minute and explain a bit about that. So uh, the first part of the process is the pre-application. Basically, uh, this is a very short summary of your planned activities. It's only uh, a few pages long. And uh, most applications actually don't make it past the pre-application stage. So it is very important uh, when you craft the pre-application to be very careful and very mindful of how important it is. Um, and when you craft it, make sure that the science is very well understood because with these grants, and I would say that with all grants, it's not just about, about having excellent science. If you're not able to explain that and be very precise and very accurate, that might uh, be a problem if you want money. So um, once you're submitting the pre-application, the application is reviewed, and uh, hopefully you're invited to submit the full application. If all goes according to plan, uh, it is reviewed again. There is, of course, a negotiation stage, and then we will see, hopefully, the notice of award. A wonderful email to get, I'll tell you. Um, and when we think about the, the different uh, elements of the application and, and the different um, uh, stages of development that they support, they typically do it through a few uh, different mechanisms. So with the NIH, you have the R01s, you have the R21s, you have SBR phase one, two, UO1s, and whatnot. And with the CDMRP, they have uh, other names a bit more clear, I, I would say. Um, so we have to remember that the interests may change, uh, the stipulations definitely change, and of course, uh, the, the sum of award. Uh, so just a, just a few examples. Uh, we have the discovery of concept awards, typically uh, one to two hundred thousand dollars. Idea awards, typically from 350 to about six thousand, sorry, six hundred thousand uh, dollars. Six thousand dollars is nice, but uh, not for this amount of work. Uh, impact awards, typically up to about $1 million. Uh, we have technology or therapeutic development awards that can get up to $3 million. And clinical trial awards that can get up to about $10 million. And, and the range is all there. I know that, for example, with many other opportunities, you see that they're very, in a way, even laser focused on a specific stage of development. But here they are inviting you to, to really do it all. Um, this is the CDMRP website. Um, they have this banner that you can see on the left, your left uh, there. And that uh, is the list of the pre-announcements that uh, they announced. You can see that there are a couple of new ones that I found yesterday, so I added them into this presentation as well. Uh, but this is the magical time of year where every time we refresh this page, we get some more solicitations, and obviously we're happy. Um, they'll probably keep on announcing these, uh, these indications for the next month, two, or sometimes three. These are all pre-announcements, meaning they will talk about the different mechanisms of award. Many of them do not have deadlines yet, uh, so stay tuned. Uh, the, the amazing CDMRP website. Um, and I just wanted to give you an idea of what type of opportunities we typically see. So these are the 2019 opportunities. Again, not all of them will probably uh, uh, be available this year, but uh, we do see some hits. Um, so this is the whole list, as you can see. And, and the reason that I included it all is for you to see how diverse it is. So you have uh, alcohol and substance abuse, you have Alzheimer's, you have breast cancer, you have spinal cord injury, you have uh, tick-borne diseases, uh, and, and definitely the sky's the limit. Um, because this is something that Congress decides, they do take the, the opportunity to change it up a bit, uh, which is great. Just a minute. Okay, so... Uh, so that's the 2019. If we're looking at what came out this year, so this is, in a way, the list. The list. Um, some of these are definitely um, topics that were available last year as well. Um, autism, Alzheimer's, uh, military burn. Um, 
and we obviously expect that list uh, to grow and grow. And I just wanted to, maybe before we start, so I just wanted to, to talk a bit about the different types of awards available. Uh, we'll briefly go through them to not make this exhausting. Um, but obviously everything's available online and, and I'll be happy to take specific questions. I just wanted to show you the different types of awards and um, also mention that there are different award mechanisms for each one of these topics. So unlike, and, and again I'll use the NIH um, as an example, you have R01 for cancer, you have, have R01 for diabetes, you have R01 for Alzheimer's. Uh, here you'll see slight differences, so it is very important uh, to very, very carefully read the solicitation, make sure that you understand what they want to see. Um, okay, so uh, let's start with Alzheimer's. Again, no, uh, no deadline just yet. Uh, they have a few uh, mechanisms uh, this year. Um, Convergence Science-Based Award, Innovation in Care and Support Award. Uh, you can see that the first two are for half a million dollars over three years. Uh, Research Partnering Award, uh, 1.3 million over three years. Acceleration Diagnosis for TBI Award and Leveraging Approaches for Innovation in Care and Support Award. So um, the size of the grants vary, and with some of them, be mindful of the fact that sometimes they'll say if you do some kind of collaboration, you can ask for a large amount. Sometimes many of, of uh, the awards in a specific topic will only be about collaborations, so uh, make sure that you, again, read the solicitation very carefully. And I'll say this many times, uh, shamelessly, because it, it is that important. Um, okay, uh, so ALS, uh, Therapeutic Development Award. Yeah. So when they call the peer reviewed program, can you explain what that, the difference between that and like this program, which is not peer reviewed? Yeah, so uh, with the peer reviewed program, uh, the major, major difference is that they have a broader list of topics and they're not as limiting in terms of the specifics of what they want to see. So for example, with Alzheimer's, um, they felt the need to expand on the program. And with some other programs, what you'll probably see is a very, very specific list of, of things they want to do. So sometimes you'll see that they're more focused on biomarkers. Sometimes it's more about you know, early stage work or uh, new methods. Uh, but peer reviewed, is, typically, it means that the, the, the topic is very broad. OK, yeah. Are these typically single awards, or do they grant to our, our um, winning applications, multiple winning applications? Multiple winning applications, yeah. I would say that, generally speaking, all of them are, are they have uh, multiple winners. Multiple awardees, yeah. No, 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 not, not at all. All of these uh, opportunities, and when, you know, when there is an exception, I, I very, very specifically wrote that down as well, are, uh, very much suitable for industry submissions. No need for publication at all. I mean, obviously it won't hurt, but yeah, that's that's not something that they expect. Okay, yeah. Um, so when I see this um, for ALS, is it easier if you apply for ideal board and then? Well, th that's, that's a tricky question. Um, yes and no. Yes, because um, with these funding agencies and obviously any funding body, the minute you, in a way, get your foot in the door and have them uh, know you and uh, you know trust you and, and hopefully see that you've completed a project, it's much easier for them to trust you again. But uh, it doesn't mean that you need to go through all the stages to be able to submit the, you know, the more advanced ones. It's, it's definitely not a requirement. Uh, we know a lot of companies, a lot of teams that do that without any type of prior engagement. Obviously, it won't hurt for them to know you and know that you know you do good work. Yeah. Sorry. Well, um, there are a list, uh, basically, teams of scientists uh, within the DoD. Most of them have industry experience, if not all of them. 
Um, no, no. So, uh, so that's the ALS. I also added uh, the Clinical Development Award, uh, which is new. Um, $300,000 over two years. Autism, Clinical Trial Award, 2.3 million over four years. The Clinical Translational Research Award, $600,000 over three years. And the Idea Development Award, a little over $500,000 over three years. Um, bone marrow failure only had one mechanism this year, the Idea Development Award, which is, as, as I'm sure you could imagine, an early stage, um, early stage uh, topic. Uh, military burn, Clinical Translational Research Award. Again, one topic, but a bit more advanced. And here specifically, they'll also fund clinical and cl preclinical work. So they do allow for that range. And by the way, when they say half a million, obviously, if you have a smaller project, that, that also works. Um, uh, okay, NF NFRP, um, Convergence Science Research Award, one million four years. Uh, and, and as you can see, you know, the list goes on and on. Some of them are a bit more hypothesis driven. Some are uh, for early stage investigator. And um, when they say early stage investigator, it typically means someone that has been active um, for about six years or less. The review process is a little different because they do want to make sure that they are uh, helping early stage teams elevate these sources for them as well. So it's typically easier to get these, uh, these awards if you're applicable. applicable sorry. Um, ovarian Cancer Research Award, um, Clinical Translational Award, Investigator Initiated. And this is, for example, as, as, uh, as I think you asked, uh, Ovarian Cancer Academy Award Early Career Investigator. This, for example, is for someone who is within their postdoc or equivalent early stage, has publications, this is very science-based. And uh, as you read through the guidelines of this specific opportunities, you definitely see the difference between partner with you know, uh, another company or just submit by yourselves and you know, advance your work. This is definitely very academia focused. It doesn't mean that you cannot submit it as a part of a company that has nothing to do with academia, but it's not exactly what they're looking to see. So I would definitely advise uh, picking another, uh, another mechanism. Uh, pilot award, uh, again, for early stage uh, researchers and uh, the Teal Expansion Award. Uh, okay. So again, you know, these, uh, the TSCRP, um, very similar. This one is even smaller, the Exploration and Hypothesis Development Award. This is for projects that just have no preliminary data. Sometimes, you know, you try and, and submit these topics and you know that you need to pr be able to present a body of work for them to consider it. Here, they don't want it. They want you to just convince them that this is something worth pursuing uh, and, and they'll be happy to, to fund you finding your lead, uh, developing a method, building a device, idea development award for a bit more advanced projects, and the clinical translational research award. Um, <clears throat> uh, breast cancer research program. With some of the oncology programs, we see that they divided into four levels. I'll tell you that although the CDMRP is very broad in terms of their interest. They take special interest in oncology. And within oncology, special tumors, uh, sorry, uh, solid tumors and also special tumors uh, are very important to them. Uh, we see that the levels of funding are higher in terms of the, the overall budget of the program. That, and by the way, they were not announced just yet, all of them. Um, but you can see that the awards themselves are relatively large, uh, start with about half a million dollars, and some of them can even get up to seven million, and, and with, with some cases, even more. And the big awards are not available for all topics, um, but we see that you know when they are focused on a specific indication, they're not shy about funding uh, big projects as well. And <clears throat> specifically with breast cancer, it was actually issued, so uh, the deadlines are here. 
for the pre-application, um, for uh, level one era and, and the era of hope, the deadline for the pre-application is March 12, and level two, three, and four, and the innovator, uh, March 13. Typically, it takes them about a month to a month and a half to review the pre-applications and get back to you with answers. And that leaves you some time to complete the full application. Um, but you need to be very organized to make sure that you're not wasting time uh, waiting. Yeah. Question. Regarding the breast cancer and the ovarian cancer program, does the award also apply to those diagnoses? <coughs> you have a better tool to diagnose breast cancer with better imaging, artificial imaging? Would that be applicable or is it only for therapeutics? So I'll just repeat the question because it's, it's a very good question. Um, does this program also support diagnostics? Absolutely, and, and maybe a, a word on that. So the DOD is very interested in technology, medical devices, diagnostics, absolutely. Um, they always write it specifically within the, you know, the, the details of the, the topic, but yeah, of course it does. Okay, so um, when I showed you this list before, within that list, uh, there was one specific topic that was hiding, uh, which is the peer-reviewed medical program. These are all very, very specific, and as you can see, you have exactly the topic, but here, obviously, it doesn't mean anything because this is, uh, in fact, a few, a few, uh, Quite, quite does a few dozens of uh, indications, and uh, that was actually just announced again yesterday. Uh, and this is the 2020 uh, peer-reviewed medical research program, the PRMRP. Um, every year, we see that this list changes; their interests change. We see a lot of um, indications that are very. Obviously, very large and, and, and not surprising at all. We see diabetes, um, uh, all kinds of you know diseases that are very uh, food allergies, but also a lot of uh, very specific indications, a lot of orphan indications, a lot of rare diseases, and uh, we think that it's beautiful because every year when this list comes out, we have to look up some of these topics to make sure that you know we understand what this is about. And you know we think that it's it's great and it's amazing uh, that they do take the time to review all of the different indications out there and and, and include them within the list. Um, so obviously you'll have the slide deck and and you'll be able to read through all of this. Uh, I just wanted you to to see and be amazed that. The, the length of the list. <laughs> yeah, this is for 2020. Yeah, full program. Yeah. Does respiratory health uh, include diagnostics? Yeah. How is peer reviewer based on your funding? Like, is it sorry? The funding, like, is it slam What's the, the amount? I actually don't know yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of the size of award, yeah, so I'll talk about that in a minute. I have many slides, don't worry. I'm kidding, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can apply to as many programs as you can, as many mechanisms as you can. Uh, you're definitely not uh, uh, bound to, to just do one, um, gladly. I mean, it, it works out well for us. So uh, I just wanted to talk about the, the different mechanisms. Yeah, oh, sorry. Well, traumatic brain injury is typically announced as a separate topic. So, I mean, it's not announced, but we see it more or less every year. Uh, I mean, always, there are always surprises, but we'll just have to wait and see. I told you, this is the most interesting time within the CDMRP website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can win awards for multiple applications, absolutely. So, um, 
We see five award mechanisms with the peer-reviewed program. Um, we see the Discovery Award, Clinical Trial Award, Focus Program Award, Investigator Initiate Research Award, and Technology or Therapeutic Development Award. Uh, typically, the Discovery Award is up to $200,000. Um, again, supports exploration of highly innovative new concept or untested theory. They don't need to see preliminary data. They just need to be convinced that this is a good idea. Um, the Investigator Initiated Research Award, up to $1.2 million or 1.5 if you have partner APIs. Uh, obviously, one of their uh, uh, goals here is to uh, support partnering. Uh, and this does not include clinical trials. Technology or Therapeutic Development Award, funding up to three million. And uh, the idea is to support preclinical findings and, and help them get into the clinical phase. We see that the projects um, that are developed uh, may be tangible items such as drugs, biologic devices, or knowledge-based uh, uh, project, so to, to come back to your question on medical device and diagnostics, absolutely. Uh, clinical trial award, surprise, surprise, they fund clinical trials. Um, we see that there is no budget cap. Uh, this does not mean that they typically award, uh, you know, 100,000, uh, 100 million dollars, sorry, per application. Uh, but they do want to have the flexibility in case you are able to justify a large award, they would like to be able to consider it. And, oh, uh, one last program, uh, the OPORP, um, basically for prosthetics um, and, uh, you know, all kinds of orthopedics related uh, work. They have a clinical research award and they have a clinical trial award. So uh, here you see the division of level one and two uh, with them as well. Level one, early stage, level two, uh, late stage. It's not a phase program, so you're not compelled to submit the level one award before you're doing the level two. They just like to divide it. Um, and just before we wrap this up, um, so a few uh, submission tips. Firstly, read the solicitation very carefully. I don't know if I said this already. Uh, they vary. Make sure that you know exactly what they're looking to see and that you understand what they want as you're submitting. The worst thing that can happen is for you to think that you're doing what you need to do and be disqualified because you do not read the solicitation carefully. You have to choose the right topic and of course the right funding opportunity. You have to remember that the pre-application is critical to the process. Uh, make sure that you take the time and, and uh, carefully prepare that. Ensure that the team is registered through their online systems. And uh, of course, keep track of the key dates. Here, most of the, the deadlines were TBD because they were not published just yet, but I, I would definitely be on the lookout making sure that you know when the specific topic that you're interested in is announced. Um, and in a way, when you're submitting the grant, and the proposals and the pre-proposal, you have to remember that your job here is to lower the risk for the funding agencies. You cannot uh, submit something that will be unsafe for them to, in a way, invest in. Um, you have to understand exactly what the interests of the funding agencies are, but you have to stay true to your R&D track. If you know what you need to do, it doesn't make sense to change gear because the application requires something else. If you ended up being awarded, you'll be uh, expected to basically see the project through, and if that was not your intention, then it will not get you very far. Um, and of course, uh, we advocate a long-term submission strategy. Make sure that you are submitting as many applications as possible, and uh, that's just how you get awards. So that's me. Thank you so much, and, and thank you so much for staying until now. Yeah. Is it for the free application, it's like you send an email or you have files online. So uh, the the submission process is done through something called EBRAP, which is an online system that they have. 
you have to be registered, both as the company and the PI, and that is how you do all the submissions. So you don't have the same No, no, it's not the same as the NIH uses. Uh, the, the registration process is a bit simple compared to the NIH one, especially for the pre-application, uh, because they're trying to keep it very lean until they know that they're committed to this as well. Okay. And, uh, you have Yeah, yeah, you can just go online and see all the programs, absolutely. Uh, to be able to submit, yeah, you need to be registered. I uh, it took me 10 minutes once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no lag time, no processing time, just a very short form. Yeah. What's your advice about the Sure. So uh, you don't need to go visit them. Uh, everything is done electronically. Uh, we typically see that it's a nine-month process. Sometimes, obviously, it's shorter. Uh, be prepared to about nine months. Yeah. So the pre-applications are two to five pages long, I would say. Some are very, very short tech boxes, text boxes within uh, the, the CDMRP website. Some require you to give a four-page document. Full applications are a bit longer, obviously. Uh, the scientific part, uh, it can be up to about 15 pages for the late-stage process, uh, the late-stage uh, programs. Uh, the earlier stage ones can be five, 10. Yeah. What's the timing cycle in terms of deadlines or is it continuous? So they announce the CDMRP program once a year. Uh, most of these actually don't have deadlines yet, unfortunately. Um, but what we typically see is that they'll start announcing the deadlines or actually announcing the programs, because these are all pre-announcements. Um, within a month or so, we'll start he have, you know, hearing the, about the, the actual deadlines. Um, they typically start with the pre-application deadlines early April, mid-March, uh, all the way up to June. Last year, breast cancer was submitted in August even. So they do spread it out, uh, and then the full application is about two to three months after that. Okay, yeah. Uh, is there any sorry? Is there any so this is recorded. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, so, no. Uh, obviously, the political aspect involved in, in these applications, if it is there, uh, is done before they announce the programs. So they, the Congress has their right to decide the programs and the amounts. But once the application is released and available, it is what it is. You're submitting the application and, and hopefully winning. And uh, you know, after working with them for quite some time now, I can tell you that they are honest and the review process is, is great. Uh, is there a politi political aspect behind the scenes before that point? I trust Congress. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So I'm with the Children's Tumor Foundation. We have our kind of disease condition called neurofibromatosis. So we're one of the conditions that are funded by the CD market. I didn't see it on the list. I don't know. If they oh, no, no, it's there. Okay. It is, it is. Um, so, we, so we're a nonprofit foundation. We advocate for funding for NF within the CD MRP. Then our role ends, and at that point, there's a Okay, and although no one can tell me to stop talking because I'm, I'm the person who does that, I think it's time for all of us to go home and rest up. <laughs> thank you all for coming. And thank you for coming to the Nando Luna Funding Summit. I hope you found it useful. And see you all next year.